if you like betting on golf But everyone that you back misses the cut Get some experts involved With all the stats and the tips and so much more Cause it's the golf betting system The golf betting system is the golf betting system Greetings and welcome to the Golf Betting System Podcast. It's episode 288. This is our 2024 The American Express and Hero Dubai Desert Classic Bets Pod. Barry O'Hanrahan and Paul Williams join me, Steve Bamford, to discuss our selection for this week's PGA and DP World Tour action. Good morning, gents. Morning, guys. Morning, guys. Please subscribe to this podcast as you drive the popularity of the show. This podcast is for listeners of 18 and above. Please be gambler aware. You can visit begambleaware.org for more information. And of course, please bet responsibly. Visit our world famous golf betting system website where we have in depth betting previews for both events. We've got strokes gained rankings for both. Course form stats combined with current form stats. Plus, of course, our two predictor models. All of that content is available. Can you believe it? It's completely free of charge. There is no paywall. On X, you can follow, follow Barry at a good talk golf. I'm at uh, Paul's at golf betting, and I am at Bamford Golf. Right now, you guys as listeners power this podcast, so we need your five star reviews on Apple Podcasts as ever. For those of you who leave a review, I will read them out at the start of a future show. Leave your name and where you are in the review. Okay, five stars. From the Lone Star State is our uh, review this week. Greetings from Houston, Texas. I absolutely love this show. It informs me tremendously each week as I make my single DFS lineup. I know this is a betting show, but I've decided this year to start the core of my lineup with the half dozen or so names discussed by these three rather smart fellows. And then I go off a bit from there to make it my own. I also find their website to be quite useful, and I'm glad it's all free. Now, if only I could make some eight places each way punts from Texas, it's not legal just yet in brackets, then I'd really be having a blast. Thanks for all the chat and the nice music each Tuesday. Keep up the great work, and that is from Brandon. Brandon from Houston, Texas. Thank you very much. Brilliant stuff. Thank you, Brandon. And uh, best of luck with your single dart entry this week let's hope it's a let's hope it's a winner nice brandon thank you very much uh, i wish i could play some dfs DraftKings is uh, blocked here in ireland and it uh, it's probably saving me money but i'm having less fun each week so i don't know how do you balance that out <laughs> yeah it's, sh- it's a shame for you guys over in ireland actually that uh, you can't play that anymore but uh, these it's, things it's change a- don't they it's surprising in such a gambly country that somebody didn't mm. figure out how to pick it up. But uh, Oh, well. Yeah. We've got so much to talk about. But what I'm going to do before we start venting, Barry, is to <laughs> just mention that is our last five-star review in, the, uh, in our store. Can you please send us some five-star reviews for next week? If you write one, you're going to be on the pod next week. It's as simple as that. Also, I keep mentioning Spotify. We are so close. We are on 495 five stars on Spotify. So if you're listening to this podcast on Spotify and haven't given us a five-star review, all you need to do, go to the podcast department page. You see three little dots. Press the three dots. It then gives you the option to rate the podcast. Press, just press five stars. Job done. That would be absolutely marvellous. If you're listening to this also on YouTube, our channel is very, very close. I mean, within 10 or 4,000 subs. So please subscribe to the channel if you're listening to this on YouTube. I know that 20% of you are. Right, okay. Paul, can you just talk the listeners through our Bet365 sponsored 2024 majors competition very quickly for me, please? Mm, Yes, um... I guess you guys who've been listening to the pod for a few years, or last year at least, um, will be au fait with this. We run a yearly 
uh, majors competition, we ask you to pick four players, four different players, one for the Masters, one for the PGA Championship, one for the US Open, and one for the Open Championship, and submit those four entries to us um, via Facebook. There's a thread on our Facebook group via um, email um, or via X, Twitter, um, and let us know who you... Um, select for those four major championships now what we do is we create a mini leaderboard of those um, players or the, those entries and allocate the dollar earnings for that player against each of the major that you've selected him for um, and then at the end of the season at the end of the open championship we uh, we declare some winners the winner um, gets courtesy of Bet365, as Steve said, £150 or currency equivalent as a top prize, £75 to the second place, £25 to the third place finisher. So essentially, four players, one and done in that respect, and uh, depending how well they do, um, depends how well you score. Now, you need to get the entries in before the first tee time at the Masters. Um, so I'm sure Steve will add a, uh, a link to the rules yeah. and how to enter in the uh, podcast description. If not, pop along to X, pop along to Facebook, um, and all the details are on there as well. But uh, always good fun. Um, we get hundreds and hundreds of entries, so um, it's uh, it's always interesting to read some of the uh, some of the thoughts and opinions and uh, selections from you guys. But uh, yeah, get involved, please. That's one of your five favourite jobs of the year, isn't it, Paul? Sending off the winning, uh, winning a cash lot to the three winners. I, I I do enjoy that bit. Yeah, it's slightly better than collating all the answers, which um, <laughs> <laughs> which, which it, takes you about three working months. It, Why it, don't it, you it, set up a Google form? It, oh, Barry, oh, that's, that's, that'd be far too easy. That'd be um, smart, wouldn't it? Dangerous. <laughs> Sorry. Apologies. <laughs> no, I, I, I really, I, I thrive on reading the entries and trying to decipher if it's Scheffler or Chauvelet that someone's written. These people that try and use tech to make your life easier, Paul. It's so oh, yeah. frustrating. I'm, a, I'm expecting hundreds of AI entries this year. Two, two analogs here, <laughs> and <laughs> me, me trying to be digital. <laughs> Let's really piss Barry off. Come on. Talk about okay. Sunday night, Barry. I, I, we're, we're talking here, listeners. Sony Open. Three players in a playoff. I had sh- fifty-five to one shot. Keegan Bradley, who only hit one of seven fairways on the back nine, and crucially didn't hit the fairway on eighteen to make the easiest birdie on the course to to win the tournament. So he goes into a playoff at fifty-five to one. And Barry, who did you have in the playoff? My rage started on Sunday morning, actually. I oh, woke, wow. up, woke up nice and early and decided to have a little bet on the DP World Tour because my picks for the week all finished uh, below that guy, Ken Wayand, I think. They were that bad. <laughs> uh, um, so there was no fun in backing Rory or Tommy, but Tristan Lawrence has been playing some cracking golf the last uh, number of months. So I said, okay, he was 34 in the exchange, so... Put a little few euro on him. Off I went to play golf, and uh, was watching the finish of it on my phone on the course, and watching Tommy make his birdies and just throw a dagger through the heart. <clears throat> so missing out on the playoff by by that happening. I like Tommy, but I want Rory to you know win if my bets don't win. So that was just a. <laughs> we can get into that then a little bit later, but yeah, it went on to like Sunday night. Then more disappointment. Had Ben Ann backed and. Well, what price playing. did you have on Ben Allen, Barry? Uh, Just to 40, to, 40, 40 to 1. 40 to 1. Yeah, thanks. That really helps. The 35 <laughs> or 40s, I can't remember. I'm trying to block it out. Anyway, he Ben was maybe fourth the week before. Um, mm-hmm. He was striping it last week. Where was he? Third off the tee, 33rd approach, 12th around the green, 23rd in putting. <laughs> he was good. Uh, but the, yeah, missed that four footer in the playoff to to extend it. It was um, kind of hurt, it sucked. Mm. I, the thing, I, really interesting thing, I couldn't, I couldn't figure out the the rationale behind Murray and Bradley were both lashing at the ball off the eighteenth tee, when it seemed like just a reasonably solid one would be, would either maybe get around the corner a little bit, or if they hit it pretty much dead straight, it might not run through the fairway. 
So mm. even if they were another 10 yards back, they weren't in that rough spot that Henley yeah. and Bradley both got into. So it didn't seem to make sense that they were both like trying to like knock the cover off the ball. But, you know, they're playing pro golf and I'm not. So uh, maybe my question is completely invalid. Um, mm. Yeah, I, I don't so know. What we're, it, it so what we're saying, Barry, is you had a 40 to 1 player in a three man playoff. I had a 55 to 1 player in a three man playoff. Yep. And the 400 to 1 chance actually won, yeah? Made a 37, 38 footer. Ooh, yeah. Just to really wind. You, sh- you should have seen. I mean, and the bunker shots, actually, to be fair to Grayson Murray, like he wasn't playing good golf throughout the day. He was just hanging on, didn't make any bogeys, I think, mm. if I remember correctly. Yeah, yeah. And true. Ma- like, three just sensational bunker up and downs that I remember on the back, like late on in the round. Played some really good golf, got a bit lucky. Like, that's it's a pretty lethal combination for uh, winning a golf tournament. Yep. He, and then he the now really counts. He now yeah. is in the world's top fifty. Don't ask me how, but this is how the world rankings now work. Now work. He's now in the world's top fifty, and of course, he will be playing at Augusta. It's amazing how this game changes a player's career within a four-day span. This all goes back. This is all Rory's uh, well, fault. This a little bit of a butterfly flapping its wings moment when Rory told Grayson in the player meeting, "Just play better." Yeah, and I think since did. then he won on the KFT. It might, I'm not sure whether it was before or after that win on the KFT in October, but let's say it was before. He's just like he gave Grayson the uh, the fire to go and do it. He did. That was at that was at the event in Toronto at Jeff Feinberg's golf club. It mm. was at that meeting when it was all going horribly wrong. They had a stand up row, didn't they? Yeah. So it, w- it was before the win in October. Then, so he did. He stoked the fire. Galvin yeah, he has been. Great, yeah, I mean, he's, he's, he, he <coughs> clearly resurrected his career at the Corn Ferry did t- level, didn't he? Winning mm. a couple of tournaments towards the end of the year, and he's taken that forward. So yeah, he, needs, he needs to send Rory a very, very uh, nice present. He's a two-time winner now on the PGA Tour, both on Bermuda grass, and there's plenty of players that we could mention that haven't got a single victory on the PGA Tour yet. So you can't have a go at Grace and Murray. Like oh, what happened at? Uh, let, let's quickly move forward. We've got such a packed show. Uh, the Dubai Invitational. What what crazy finish happened there? Yeah, yeah. It was. Well, if 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 you weren't financially invested, it was uh, it was a great watch towards the end. Um, I mean, I, to be fair, I, I wasn't financially invested at that point because Rasmus and Adrian Otegi, who I'd backed and had been my best chances, both kind of huffed and puffed and. We're nowhere near close enough in the end, but ultimately Rory should have won that. If you go back, um, he made a quad on Friday, wasn't it, on the par three, hit the water twice. Um, made a three putt from absolutely nowhere on the back nine on Sunday. Um, yeah, he's, he's looking at three feet or less for a birdie on the par three and ends up three putting it and then, then finds water on the last. And meanwhile, Tommy's just uh, holding everything on the last couple of holes. And uh, yeah, I, I, Barry, I can you know see why you went for 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 Thriston Lawrence. There was you know a great opportunity there for for him to be the one mm. who, who kind of pushed through and won that. But but ultimately. Um, ultimately, it was Tommy, and I, we talked about Tommy last week, didn't we? He'd flown directly over from Hawaii. He was the only player in the field who'd played the previous week, so I guess you could argue that he'd shaken the rust off. But um, you know, he, he didn't exactly set the world alight over at the uh, over at the Century. Would he finish mid forties, something like that, down the field? Um, you know, a horribly short price last week in Dubai, and, and goes and wins it. So. I'd imagine there weren't that many punters on Tommy, but uh, if there were any brave enough to take the price and uh, uh, and get the win, then then well done to you all. To to see Rory missing, I mean, he he, he did a Ben on uh, three putt, didn't he? And um, and then he, he lashes it in the water on eighteen. Not Should have won. Well, Should have won. I mean, yeah. You, you look at the final result, and that goes down as a Tommy win, and, and, and undoubtedly Rory will be the the disappointed party there because it wouldn't have taken much for him to win that. But uh, those are the uh, those are the vagaries of golf at the kind of business end of the uh, the tournament, and we saw both of them. Someone goes and makes a couple of you know the putt on seventeen from Tommy was great, and then uh, then followed mm. it up on eighteen. 
And uh, yeah, hats off to him. Just to conclude the venting, I've never had a winner at the Sony Open. Never. Keegan Bradley now joins a list that includes Tim Clark at 33 to 1, Branch Snedeker at 28 to 1, and Andrew Putnam at 80 to 1. Those are my selections that are finished runner up at the Sony Open. Four runners up, no winners. Fifth time lucky next year, Steve. It's all good stuff. <laughs> Uh, two cracking events this week. I never used to say that about the Bob Hope Classic, but it's now uh, getting a stronger and stronger field. The American Express, to those of you who are relatively new to golf betting, this is for old stages like us, the Bob Hope Classic. It used to be played over five events and four courses. It was an absolute lottery. Uh, it must have been a lottery because players like Charlie Hoffman used to win this. Um, they've now pulled it back. It's now three courses. The stadium course, which is a Pete Dye design, um, that ho- hosts the uh, one of the opening three rounds and the final round. We have also got the tournament course, which is a Jack Nicklaus design, and La Quinta Country Club. Those two ta- uh, courses host one of the four rounds. Um, I'm not really going to get into too much detail about the courses. They are crazily easy. Last year, these courses ranked as the second, third, and fourth easiest golf courses on the whole of the PGA Tour. And, from what I've seen, the weather is going to be warmer and less windy this year. Lights out, Astrodome-type golf this week. Could see 30 under winning this? Yep. Yep. I really could see 30 under winning this. So... That's where we are at. In terms of bookmaker of the week for the 2024 American Express, we're highlighting William Hill this week. They've gone eight places each way at 50 odds to place on their Amex default market. I've used their eight places each way at 50 odds market on four of my six selections. That was yesterday on Monday. Right now, as we record the pod, they are offering extended market best odds and eight places each way on players like Tom Kim, 25 to 1, Siwoo Kim, 40 to 1. He's only 35 to 1 with Skybet. Chris Kirk, who I found amazing, he's 40 to 1, Chris Kirk, in, in this current vein of form. He was third here last year, 33 to 1, only with Skybet on Chris Kirk. He's 40 to 1 with William Hill. And how about. I'll tell you, here's a player that keeps catching my eye recently. Austin Ekro. He's absolutely making bundles of birdies. 125 to 1 with William Hill, eight places each way. He's only 100 to 1 currently with Paddy Power. If you are 18 plus and do not have a William Hill account, you can find details of their current bet £10, get £30 in free bets, new customer promotion. Plus a link through to that very offer with T's and C's in this podcast description. I must say, I was very, very pleased with William Hill's prices yesterday when they came out. They they upped their, mm. they certainly upped their uh, their prices and their proposition this week at the American Express. Um, I've got six selections this week, chaps, and this is the kind of event I know that you two aren't going to go overly heavy on, but. I love to try and find the winner in something like this. So I've got six. Six at this total and utter birdie fest. Um, let's just give the a little bit more background as to what punters might be looking for this week. It's very much feast or famine in terms of the kind of player that wins this. Um, we've got John Rahm winning this last year. I believe he was... I think he was um, 15 to 2 or 13 yeah, to 2. 13 to 2. 13 to 2 favourite. Year before that, Hudson Swafford, 175 to 1. Year before that, Siwoo Kim, 66 to 1. I can, I can, people are licking their lips I can, as they're listening to this. Andrew Landry, 200 to 1 shot. Adam Long, before that, a rookie, 600 to 1. And then, of course, 2018, you get John Rahm, 10-1. to 1. <laughs> So Rahm's won it twice. Now he's off to live. 10-1 to 1 and 13-2. to 2. You then add a 66, 175, 200 and 600 to 1 winner. If you, if you total all that up, 
run it through. It's a 210 to 1 winning average of this. And the overall average going way back to Bill Haas in 2010, he won at 100 to 1, is 131 to 1. So we could end up with a very weird and wacky winner. However, there is some hope in there. Clearly, John Rahm twice. Siwoo Kim, 66 to 1. Hudson Swafford, 66 to 1. Jason Duffner, 40 to 1. There is some hope that someone with a little bit of logic can be found this week to win this. And it's a very good field, I have to say. It's loaded with some of the best players in the world. Probably the best field that I've seen gather for this. You can mm. see that this, const you know, this constricted schedule now is forcing more of the best players to more generic non-signature event tournaments early on in the year because they're, they're having to get their reps in. Um, on, on events that they normally would have played at the fall last year. So they're having to, you know, preload their schedule up front in 2024 with more events. Any other things of note? There is also here some logic, potentially. Um, if we go back to Jason Duffner, since they've gone to this course rotation, he was ninth at the Sony Open the previous week, he was sixth after 54 holes, so he was, he was in the midst of the fight. Year after that, Hudson Swafford, 13th at the Sony Open. He was in. Th he was third after 54 holes before coming here and then winning this. John Rahm, he was second at Kapalua. He was third after 54 holes. And John Rahm last year, first at Kapalua, fifth after 54 holes at Kapalua. So there's four of the last seven who have been in contention at their previous PGA Tour start in the same year. Clearly, Siwoo Kim and Hudson Swafford do not follow that pattern, but it's something to go off. Just going through this field and players that would fit that pattern, so top six, the outing before this year. Chris Kirk, of course, fourth last week at the Sony. Uh, you've got Grayson Murray, who won. Sam Stevens, who was third going into last week's uh, final round. We've got Chris Kirk, fourth. Pavon, Semikawa, Ben Silverman. Austin Eckroat was ninth. Troy Merritt was ninth. And then at Kapalua, we've got Akshay Bhatia. We've got Xander, who was third. I so hope that Xander doesn't win this. And we've got Scotty Scheffler, of course, who was sixth with Jason Day. So there's some names to peruse. Scotty Scheffler, of course, is the usual 11-2 to favourite. The strokes gain data for this only is for the host course. So if you look at last year, John Rahm actually won this with a 1.1 stroke negative strokes gain putting performance. But that is only across 36 of the 72 yeah. holes. Mm. I still think in my mind, you know, I think if if you are putting negatively and can shoot 30 under this week, that that's a big doubt for me on Scotty Scheffler. The other one, of course, you've got Xander and uh, you've got Patrick Cantlay, both at pretty much single digits odds. Um, based on that kind of thing that we've just gone through, Xander probably isn't a bad shout. And it would be typically Xander, wouldn't it, to not win a tournament for 18 months and then roll up here and win this at 9-1 to one with barely anyone on him. Mm. So I do fear that a, a, a Scheffler, a Cantlay or a X will win this, but that's not my style. So I, I've gone for, for bigger prices this way. So within the madness, there is some hope that something almost logical could happen. But in all likelihood, you might also get a 225 <laughs> to 1 winner like we saw last week that you've got yeah. no idea is coming. That's kind of where we're at with the, the American Express. Right. I've basically gone for players. It's very, very simple what I've done this week. And it seems to get kind of results. I got a decent place last year with JT Post. And the year before that, I had Tom Hoagie who finished second at 175 to 1. 
So there's, there's some method in my madness on this. Um, this year, I am going for JT Poston, one and a half points each way at 30 to one. I've got that with Boyle Sports, eight places each way. He's playing phenomenal golf. His tee to green game is excellent. We know with JT Poston, he's a very, very strong putter. And we also know that his two PGA Tour victories, he's now in the top 40 in the world, JT Poston, on the quiet. Um, he's won at 22 and 21 under. And those courses kind of correlate. Sedgefield for the Wyndham Championship and also the John Deere Classic, another one of these lights out tournaments. That's on Bent Grass. Uh, the Wyndham one, of course, on Bermuda Grass. He's also got a very sneakily good Pete Dye design record. I won't go through all the numbers, but it's all there in my preview. There's a link in the description box. For me, JT Poston at 30 to 1 was a must back. I'm one and a half points each way on Poston. I'll tell you another player I really like the look of this week is Jason Day. One and a half points each way. I got 33 to 1 with William Hill, eight places each way on Jason Day. And you just look at his record and how well he's been playing and a very under the radar good desert golf course record. And of course, as we said earlier, he was sixth going into the final round at Kapalua, ended up finishing 10th at the Century, signature level tournament. He won the Grant Thornton Invitational in December with his teammate Lydia Ko. He's playing some very good golf at the moment, Jason Day, and he broke his five-year winless streak on the PGA Tour last year when he won that drag strip of a birdie fest, the Byron Nelson at TPC Craig Ranch. I believe he won that with a final round 62 or 63 on the Sunday. So he can shoot very low scores, can pick Jason Day on the choir. And also, three of his wins have come on Pete Dye tracks. Of course, 2015 PGA Championship is one major. That's at Whistling Straits. He won the 2016 WGC Dell match play at the tournament that Paul always used to cover at TPC um, Austin. And also, he won the players at Sawgrass. So three wins on Pete Dye Designs for Jason Day. And the other one of that kind of price range, I mean, again, 33 to 1, one and a half points each way. Again, with William Hill on this one, eight places each way. They've got some cracking odds this week. This one isn't going to surprise anybody. But if there's one player who has been trending seriously towards a win, who can make bucket loads of birdies, who is a fantastic putter, and last week the thing that really impressed me, especially in, in, in rounds three and rounds four, was his driving, which was pretty long and very straight, which is has been his bugbear ever since he hit the main tour. Eric Cole. So I've gone one and a half points at 33 to 1 on Eric Cole. His numbers are just amazing. Last season, first for total birdies, sixth for birdie average, and already this year, he's seventh for total birdies after two events. Just makes bucketfuls of birdies. So at that 30 to 33 to 1 range, I'm on Poston, Jason Day, and Eric Cole. I've got no idea who of the players that you two guys are on. So as ever, Paul, I'm coming to you first. Where, where are you Where are you sticking uh, sticking your stake in the ground this year in terms of price at the Amex? So I've backed three this week. Um, one at 20s, um, one that we've shared, well, we've, we've got the same uh, same player at 55s, and I'm sure you can guess which one that is. Of course. Um, and then um, one um, just around the three-figure level as well I'll, go, I'll take you through the shorter one and then we can do the rest as we go through we know um, who this is going to be <laughs> yeah go on then the most obvious bet of the week go on. top topped birdie or better at the century he's a South birds. Korean very talented sort two wins <laughs> on the PGA Tour one of them in the desert yeah absolutely in Las Vegas Sung Jae Im 20 to 1 I, I and we talked about his century performance last week didn't we and uh yeah, 34 birdies. That That's very nearly every other hole. Uh, finished fifth in the end. And if you got someone who's been that prolific with birdies in the very recent past, and you come into an event like this where birdies are the currency, uh, I think he could uh, he could just hit the ground running and absolutely run away with this. He's got some hyper-consistent form here at PGA West as well, hasn't he? 
12th, 10th, 12th, 11th, 18th from five starts. Yeah, it's consistent. It is, yeah. I, th- I, th- I think he can go better than that. I think he can produce a big personal best here this week and uh, and potentially win it. I th- you take him back, uh, or you talked about Jason Duffner um, a few seconds ago, and Duffner, when he won, you could pick the minutiae of his performance the previous week where he had topped Birdie performance at the uh, would have been the Sony and then went on to win uh, win this event and I think the logic with Sung JM very much follows so 20 to yeah. 1 happy to take him this week yeah can't argue cannot argue what about you Baron are you anywhere in this kind of pl- part of the market or are you are you going to be deeper down I, I mean, I, I have to join Paul on um, Song Jae. The, it's going to backfire, but it, there's also the FOMO. So if if he's just if he's got that vibe of making birdies, he had a week off to just to just cool things down. So yeah, it's um, it makes it makes so much sense. And twenty to one is nice. Um, I, I I went through his record and. Every one of his main tour wins, or decent tour wins, I'm not talking about some event he played in Korea last year against all guys ranked 700th in the world, all came off something like 30th, 25th. So that's the only reason, the only thing I could find not to back Sanjay to that. So, yeah, I am completely see where you two are at. Mm. I mean, look, the added bonus is if it does go wrong, I've ruined one of Paul's bets because he's done that to me a few times recently. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I'm it's winning fair. either way. It's, it's worth great. a couple of quid just to do that, isn't it? A bit of revenge, bro. Yeah. Uh, where, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back on to Eric Van Royen. Yep. Nice price this week. Um, I don't know, all right week last week um, in the Sony. I just I kind of I kind of like him on um, on birdie fest courses. So yeah, mm. yeah, let's go. I like well, Eric. He's within the top twenty five of my rolling eight weeks strokes gained on approach numbers, and he gained a whopping three strokes with the with the driver last week at the Sony. Yeah. So he's marked on a green to go on my sheet, but I didn't pick him. So yeah, Eric Van Royen, very just, logical. Love that. Um. My long shot is um, Eric Van Royen as well, Barry. There you go. So uh, mm. we're, we're horribly aligned this week. But uh, yeah. I, don't forget, this is the guy who shot 27 under to win the WWT back in mm. uh, November, wasn't it? So mm. um, he can go low enough yep. to win this. I'm President's Cup, yeah. And did you see the amount of internationals all floating around the top of the leaderboard last week, including mm. Ben Arn, who got into a playoff? Yep. Yep, I'm with you guys. Um, I've gone for a 55 to one shot that I know Paul will be on. He makes birdies and eagles in bunches. Fifth for par breakers last term. Tenth for total birdies. Second for par four birdie or better. That's handy on this, this week with plenty of par fours on three par 72s. He was seventh for eagles per hole last season. In this field, that's only behind a player called Hayden Buckley, who we know is another sort that's very long and very straight off the tee. Now, I can't say that about Montgomery. He tends to be a little bit crooked. But of late, the driving seems to have improved. His approach play last week at the Sony was lights out. The only reason he finished 13th, because usually, as Paul mentions literally every week when he backs him, this guy is a tremendously good putter. It was only the putter that held him back last week. And when I look at his form from mid-October forward, 35th at the Shriners, 16th at the Zozo, 31st at the WWT, then there's an 8th at the RSM and a 13th last week. That's the kind of form we saw from someone like a Hudson Swafford who won this at that 66-1 to price point. He was fifth here last year. He also, I believe, has a, a top 10 finish at the Shriners, TPC Sumlin, potentially. He was up there, top 12, something like that. Taylor Montgomery. Love his chances this week, Taylor Montgomery. Mm, absolutely. I, I, I love the idea of having a, a top-class putter on the team this week. It makes 
so much sense. And as you say, Steve, last week's stats were unusual for him, weren't they? Second for strokes gain approach, hmm. tenth for strokes gain tee to green, and a pretty neutral with a putter, which yeah, which really, really isn't. Likely, I think that was it? one of his best tee to green performances, Paul, of his short but fairly chunky because we had like a season that lasted 18 months, um, PJ to a career. Mm. Just the putter bolt. So it, yep. it looks like he's been working really hard on the basics, the fundamentals. You yeah. just hope this week the putter starts coming back. Well, if, if he marries those two together, then he's going to run Sungjae very, very close this week. Now, you mentioned Jason Duffner. He topped birdies or better at the Sony the week before winning. You guys are all on Sung J M, who birdied all better, forty seven point two percent of holes at Kapalua at the century. I'm on a guy that was fur uh, sorry, T T two for Birdie All Better last week at the Sony. And I'm sorry, I'm gonna bring this back to you, Barry. The only player that beat him was Ben Arn who made the most birdies or better last week at the Sony. I'm on Akshay Bhartia. And Akshay, um, he made an eagle and 21 birdies last week, which was the same as our backdoor hero, Russell Henley, who got another backdoor top five at a ridiculously short price. Emiliano Grio, who I can never say the name of, and Denny McCarthy. Uh, there was also Michael Kim, who could be one to look at this week. He, he made lots of birdies and uh, one eagle last week as well. Sorry, he made 22 straight birdies rather than an eagle. Michael Kim. Um, but yeah, Bartia, 60 to 1. I'm on him. Um, he literally, when you look at recent outings, he's always in the top 20 for birdie or better each and every week. He makes a huge amount of birdies. And I can remember him a couple of weeks ago. He was in the final group, wasn't he, at the Century, which I thought, wow, Akshay Bhartia in the final group of a 59-man signature event level tournament. I mean, that's a big step up for Akshay Bhartia. From California, his first ever top 10 on the PGA Tour was at Silverado. He's, his, his only ever major was the uh, US Open they held at Pebble Beach. He was 57th in that, so he's clearly got an affinity with the Golden State. I've got 60 to 1 with William Hill, eight places each way on Akshay Bhartia, who literally is lights out in terms of his birdie making at the moment. And just about long enough to make a few eagles as well. I've now got one other tip, boys. He's 175 to 1. Do you want to chime in with any others before I go on to that? Uh, no, I'm done. Sung Sungjae Montgomery and uh, Van Royen for me, my three. Barrett? Uh, no, nothing specific. Nah, I have a whole bunch of them at like 150 plus. Or, so I, I just, uh, I'm not going to scattergun it right here it's on all, the pod. It's, it's all in play <laughs> this week. These these it, big monsters, mate. Big know, monster yeah. prices. I, I, one, I, lad did cut, cut, one lad I probably will back is Alejandro Tosti. Just right. caught my eye in a couple of the early rounds last week. Had uh, had a very poor third round, seventy seven. That kind of doesn't help your chances, but uh, yeah, I'll figure it out. I wonder if this guy Adrian um, Dumont du Chassar, I think I've got his name terribly wrong there. Um, he's there's a lot of hype there. I wonder if he kind of figures it out. An easy course will help him kind of uh, find the comfort zone to get yeah. started. He was way down the way down the field last week. I I do keep an eye on him because we we mentioned him quite a bit at the back end of last year. But um, mm. yeah, there was nothing there last week. But watching no, brief, not, I think yeah, it may, may maybe that like tight you know tight little tricky course like that doesn't. It's not the easiest mm. intro, but yeah, let, let's see. It's just it's. I mean, with kind of one eye to the future, the Ryder Cup because he is getting hyped quite a lot. So it's uh, it's one who, whose name just you know. Um, catches my eye on the leaderboards or yeah. bottom of the leaderboards as it was last week. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you some players I had, a quick, I had a very deep look at and didn't go for. Nick Taylor. He was second at Phoenix last year and he was in the top 10 last week. Nick Taylor, Canadian. 
Cam Davis, he fired that lights out 62 to start Sony Open last week and then kind of just trod water. The sort. People seem to be undervaluing this Carl Yuan. Another mm. huge price this week for a guy that finished in the top five last week for Carl Yuan. And he, he also had a top five at the end of last year. Fourth last week. In the Can't end. talk about your man virtually certain, is it? Who? Did you not see the whole drop thing? That oh, no, 18? I didn't see that. No, that's oh, a new one okay, go, go, you, The virtually certain thing will make sense when you go check it out. The most outrageous temporary immovable obstruction drop in, in, in tour history. He's, um, I mean, it's call, it's call, he calls, I mean, by the, by the thing, it probably costs some players, you know, money and FedEx Cup points. You know, it could, it'd be interesting if something like this has an effect at the end of the season. Oh, well, yeah, no doubt about that. He was fourth at the Bermuda Championship, Carl Yuan, and he was in the top seven for birdies or better that particular week. And then last week, you've got him finishing fourth, and he was again in the top uh, the top seven for birdies or better. And you're, you're getting him at a huge triple-digit price this week, Carl Yuan. Um, the one I've plumped for is Patton Kazaya. Now, Patton Kazaya... You know, if you're down the pub and we're having a we're having a our thirteenth beer of the day after going around Wentworth, you know, not that we would do that. What do you think? You know, and you're talking about players. Patton Kazai, always the sort resort scoring courses, twenty under jobs. Yeah, he can put lights out, make loads of birdies in bunches, and to me, he's the kind of player that always plays well in the desert. And you look at his record, yeah, second and fourth in Las Vegas at the Shriners. He's had top tens at the Barracuda. He's had a top ten at Phoenix. And then you just look at what he's doing at the moment. I don't think he's got a full card from memory. He's had a 12th at the RSM Classic at the end of last year, and he had a 13th last week at the Sony Open. And it's how he's actually... Sorry... He's had a 12th and a 13th for strokes gained T to green those two weeks. That's what I'm, where I'm coming from. Which is very un pattern Kazaya like It looks like he's gone back to basics and he's actually hitting fairways, which he hasn't done for years. He's hitting the ball straight. He's playing some very nice um, approach, consistent approach play. And you just think with Pan, what's the kind of course where that will eventually come out and go, oh, all of a sudden, patterns towards the top of a leaderboard. It's something like this week where that will happen. He was 11th here last year, and I can assure you he wasn't playing golf of the same standard arriving here last year from tee to green. He has taken a leap or two over where he was. So if he can keep the the tee to green game going and actually make some birdies this week, Pat and Kazaya, 175 to 1 I'm on him with ball sports, eight places each way. Pat and Kazaya. So Kazaya, Akshay Bhatia, Taylor Montgomery for Paul and myself, and then I've gone Eric Cole, Jason Day, JT Poston. Right, let's move on. We've got an absolute cracker in Dubai, the Hero Dubai Desert Classic. Over to you, Paul. Yeah, the, the first Rolex Series event of the of the calendar year. And as I said last week, actually, um, Abu Dhabi tends to be the first Rolex Series event, but that's been pushed back to November. It'll be the, the event before the DP World Tour Championship this year. So essentially the uh, Dubai Desert Classic is the headline tournament of the early season Middle East swing this year. And we're back to a full field, uh, well, 126 players, so um, near as damn it a full field. Back to having a halfway cut, so regular tournament play, no Pro-Am element, element like last week. So back to normal. Interesting field, as you say. Uh, four of the world's top 15 are here. Uh, Rory McIlroy headlines, as you might expect, hundreds of 30, 10 to 3, the best price um, as of Tuesday morning here over in the UK. He's going for his fourth Dubai Desert Classic title this week. So it kind of explains the price, of course. Uh, Till Hatton, 10 to 1. Uh, Till loves a Rolex Series event, doesn't he? He's got a, got a few in his on his CV over the years. 
Uh, 10 to 1 if you fancy a little bit, bit of Tyrrell. Last week's winner, Tim, Tommy Fleetwood, 11 to 1. Adrian Moronk, 22s. Brian Harmon, the Open Championship winner. Uh, drifting a little bit in the market, 22 to 1 also. Cameron Young's playing, 22 to 1. Then we've got the likes of Nikolai Hoygaard, Adam Scott, Joaquin Neiman, 25 mm. to 1. Joaquin was playing some good stuff back end of uh, 2023, wasn't he? 28 to 1 bar those players that I've just mentioned. So Crackenfield, um, some decent enough each way terms out there. Coral Labrooks, Boyle Sports, all of them eight places each way, 150 odds by default. And of course, we've got the Bet365 range of options as ever with their each way extra facility. So do do, do, do some shopping around before you uh, place your bets, because there may be some decent options on there with your each-way combinations. We're at the Majlis course, the Emirates Golf Club in Dubai, as ever. A Cole Litton design, so same designer as last week. Uh, regular desert affair this week, though. 7,428 yard par 72, four par fives, a driver par four at the 17th hole. Now, all the greens were remodelled, and we mentioned this last year. Uh, they were remodelled ahead of the 2022 renewal. Uh, same Bermuda Tiff Eagle grass has been used in the putting surfaces, so they didn't change that. What they did do was they made the holes or made the putting surfaces around about a third bigger. So they're huge um, putting surfaces uh, now at the Emirates. 12 to 13 on the stimp usually and typically quite firm and we saw last week at dubai creek which is just down the road that the greens there were getting nice and firm and fast and uh, with no rain in the forecast and the weather sets looks set fair actually dry sunny relatively calm calm light winds no wind in the forecast i'm expecting the greens to be pretty firm this week which will create some kind of a challenge for the players, I think. Loads of history to run through this week, all on the website. We've got event stats going back to 2002 on the site, um, current form, uh, combined form, etc. all there available to peruse. Just to give you a flavour of recent winners, start, let's start at 2015, shall we? 2015 was Rory. That was his second Dubai Desert Classic win at the time. 7-2 to two he won. Back in 2015. 2016, Danny Willett, 40s. Sergio, the following year, 20 to 1. Hao Tong Lee, 110 to 1 in 2018. Bryson won in 2019 at 10s. Lucas Herbert, 200 to 1 in 2020. Then most recently, Paul Casey, 25 to 1. Victor Hovland, 10 to 1. And then Rory uh, won his third. Uh, Dubai does a classic title last we uh, last year. Sixteen to five, I've got listed here. He opened at seven to two uh, early on on the Monday last year, and then got backed in much in the same way as he has been backed in already this week. Now, there's a few shocks in there, but mainly in the main, short prices have tended to get the uh, get the job done here. Again, with the, with so much history, we've got lots of stats to pour through. A lot of the um, traditional old style stats going back to the day, and then a bit of strokes gained more recently. Historically, the real stat to pick out has been greens and regulation. It's always been a strong GIR test. This uh, we've got five years worth of strokes gained data, so that kind of gives us a, a more granular level nowadays. Uh, the last five winners from strokes gained off the tee, they ranked 4th, ninth, 6th, 2nd, 2nd. So strokes gained off the tee is really quite consistent here. Strokes gained tee to green, 3rd, 7th, 1st, 3rd, 4th from our five winners. So if you're going to pick out three key stats this week, if you're just going to go to the predictor and load up um, just three stats, greens in regulation, strokes gained off the tee, strokes gained tee to green would be the cornerstones of my analysis and have been the cornerstones of my analysis this week. Now, fairly flat greens over here at the Emirates. So um, you could, I think really the recipe for success is making sure you give yourself plenty of chances. And that kind of lends itself back to the greens in regulation uh, point from a few seconds ago. If you can give yourself chances with a strong long game, then you've got, um, or you give yourself a chance of actually winning the, winning the golf tournament, I think. 
In terms of current form, the last 13 winners all had at least one top 10 finish in their last nine starts. So reasonable incoming form in Casey, Hovland, McElroy, the last three winners. All of them had finished eighth or better on their very last start. Their most recent effort was a top eight finish and uh, a top four finish for, for McElroy last year coming into this. The last five winners, another trend. Last five winners all had a top 25 finish here at the Emirates before winning. So again, this you know, it, it tends to lend itself to a traditional view of current form and event form is not a bad place to start here. If you're looking at debutants, Richard Green in 1997 was the last debutant to win. So some of these guys flying over from the States, from the PGA Tour, making their debut this week. Um, they're going to have to break a long non-debutant um, uh, trend here to, uh, to to actually get the job done. We shall see. I think for me, biggest challenge this week, likely to be the Greens firming up. Um, new pin positions that they can be um, employed as a result of the changes that have been put in um, after the, over the last couple of years. I think, um, yeah, in contrast to last year, which was quite soft, and that did play into the hands of Rory last year. There was a bit of rain in the lead up to the event, and uh, you know, Rory turns up having done a done a rain dance and and walks away with the title. Although it wasn't all plain sailing. You remember last year that was the event that he um, he went into that tussle with Patrick Reed and uh, you know, eventually mm. got over the line on the eighteenth, but. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it, it wasn't all plain sailing, but that was with some some wet condition or with some softer condition, should I say? So uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see how it pans out this week. Really cautious approach for me though this week. I must say, I've, I went through the the betting a few times. I went through the analysis, and the the, the challenge is McIlroy could win this. McIlroy should have won last week. Um, he's what just over three to one, hot favourite to win this. He's won it three times already. Um, the only thing, and the only thing that really puts me off, is the fact that it is much drier this year. And um, as we know with Rory, he plays his very best golf when there's a bit of cut in the turf, when there's a little bit of softness, and um, he can just go out there and shoot lights out. And I think he won't quite get that this week, and that does just a bit level the playing field so uh, so I'm, I'm going to take a chance to some other players but there's very much you know an uh, you know, erring on the side of caution here because Rory could still go and win the tournament of three to one and everyone's just playing for a pace which uh, which is always the frustration when uh, you have this kind of setup from a betting perspective other players near the top Tyrrell I mean he loves a Rolex event as I said but he's still apt to a uh, tantrum or three isn't he on the course Tommy has never gone back to back um, he's gone close a few times um, but he's never gone win-win and I, he's, he's not historically been that kind of winning machine I yeah I think again Tommy could probably go reasonably close but um, not, not for me at 11 to 1 Harmon Young Neiman um, they're all making their debut this week so again back to the point about Richard Green and being the last debutant winner I think it will probably be beneficial for those guys to have seen the course before and uh, and and maybe in the years to come if they continue to grace us with their presence. Perhaps they'll win one further down the line. Anyway, um, I've only backed three this week. As I say, cautious approach. The first one for me is Adrian Moronk, who backed yesterday at 25, 22 to 1 best prize out there. He's been nibbled in, but quite rightly so, I think. Four wins over the last couple of years on tour. Most recent was that uh, Andalusia Masters victory, which came shortly after the uh, Ryder Cup, after being snubbed at the Ryder Cup. Plenty of column inches have been written and plenty of words said about his omission from the team. But uh, that's, that's water under the bridge now. He got another win, just to prove his point, in the Andalusia Masters. Into the world's top 50 now. Gained a PGA Tour card, as we know. Um, you know, it's not all bad for the uh, for the big pole, is it? He's he's going places with his game and uh, with his career. I think this course sets up perfectly for him as well. He was fourth here on debut back in twenty twenty two. Um, he's got that strong strokes gained off the tee game that uh, I think you need to succeed here. Tenth last week and on his reappearance at Dubai Creek, second for strokes gained off the tee, sixth for strokes gained tee to green. 
I think he can give Rory and uh, if any of the other favourites are towards the very top, I think he can give them all a run for their money this week and potentially win it, Adrian Moronk, at 22 to 1 best price right now. At slightly longer price, um, I've also backed Thjorbjorn Olsen at 33 to 1. Uh, he's another player who earned a PJ Tour card with his uh, strong campaign last year. He's based out in the UAE now, so of course it made sense for him to stick around here in Dubai to start his year. Played last week in uh, at Dubai Creek, playing this week at the Dubai Desert Classic. And playing some good golf as well. Three top three top nine finishes in his last four events of the 2023 season. His long game looked really, really good. By his own admission, was a bit rusty coming into last week. But um, I think the performance, particularly with the putter, he finished eighth last week. His performance with a putter was, um, was, was a revelation for him. Particularly how his long game had been at the back end of last year. And for me, statistically, um, four for strokes game putting, that's a real eye-opener um i've got to be involved with olsen when the putter's working going back to a course he's got four top finishes here at the uh, or top eight finishes here at the emirates so coming back to a course where he has previously performed well he's got a rolex series win to his name as well he won the 2018 italian open so it wouldn't be out of kilter for theorbjorn olsen to win this week's event I don't think and the only other one I've backed is Ewan Ferguson 70 to 1 um, as I said I'm keeping it very tight this week with uh, with Rory locking, uh, looking like a potential winner at the top of the market Ferguson won the court the eye statistically last week at Dubai Creek as well twice a winner in 2022 couldn't quite muster a victory last year but plenty of top 10s last year including at the earth course at the back end of the season in November Strokes going approach, strokes going tee to green game was really on point at the back end of the year and uh, opened his account last week with a solid 11th place finish. Fifth for accuracy off the tee, fourth for greens regulation, second for strokes going approach, 10th for strokes going tee to green last week. Long game was looking really, really good. It's a winner in the Qatar, that was a couple of years ago, um, 28th here on debut 12 months ago. So... Um, has a, had had a little sight of the course, can play desert golf, um, playing some lovely stuff from tee to green, Ewan Ferguson, so yeah, I'm quite happy to give him a chance. But that's my three, Ferguson, Olathan and Adrian Moronk. Any bets on the DP well for you, Barry, this week? Um, I'm... Weighing up Lawrence, but he has two missed cuts here the last couple of years, so I yeah. have to figure out whether how to balance that or if he just goes from a missed cut to a let's mm. even say a place. Yeah. Uh, it's a, so it's a little off putting, isn't it? A little bit, yeah. But he's playing he's playing some serious golf, so you know that's I'd like to think that just yeah. overcomes any mental scars from a couple of missed cuts here. Mm. Uh, so to figure that one out um the other one that i was looking at was caught my eye through the strokes gained um and playing well because he's qualified to um in the live qualifying series as cali samoya yeah he's 36 last week he has 16th 27th 4th 12th and 38th here his last five years so clearly gets on well with the course and I'm just trying to figure out the combination of uh, price and places to back him. After him, I'm not really, not really sure. It's it's interesting. I guess it's Rory's records that has him at ten to three when he was broadly three to one last week in a field half the size. Yeah, that, that'd be pretty much it with it. Yeah. I think so, yeah. It's well, he's got the guys going for a fourth Dubai Desert Classic win. It's um, yeah, he, he, he absolutely loves the place, and yeah, mm. you could quite reasonably have seen him win last week. And you know, had he had he won, would he, would he be slightly shorter? Arguably, probably not. I expect he's he was probably going to be chalked up around this three to one price point, regardless. So, <laughs> it's whether you can stomach yeah. the price. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, and might be the greatest thing that could happen to him in twenty twenty four. 
having that whoopsie at the very start of the season to to focus the mind. It's almost like missing sorry, bad bad analogy, but as an amateur, you know, you miss that little just little tap input by, you know, not paying too much attention. And for the next few months you grind really hard on all of those puts and you don't miss a short one. So, you know, the 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 result in the initial stage is terrible, but um what it does over the long term is helps you out. So that's it's the only positive take I can try think of from last week for Rory. Yeah, uh, that, it's, that it's it, something. Yeah. Something you said to me in um, on on Thursday or Friday was about backing Rory for a first round leader because he the the price of first round leader always tends to be you know quite inflated versus his outright price. He's um, unbelievable at it. Yeah, he, he he gets so many fast stars, doesn't he? You know, notwithstanding the, the discussions we've had around the majors, where he he yeah. quite often shoots himself on the foot on the Thursday, but regular tournaments. And anyway, yeah, last week, another case in point, wasn't it? it just got just flew out of the blocks and uh, looked all, all you know for, for all intents and purposes the winner. He was he was odds on for long stretches of that tournament um, before finally getting beaten at the uh, at the death by by Tommy but yeah I, I don't know I, I, perhaps you'd look at it and trying to find some value is it a first round leader punt on him or is it potentially um you know mm. wire to wire if you do fancy him there's uh, there's different ways to play it but uh, but yeah I, I'm just I'm, I'm just gonna gonna swerve him and hope that he doesn't uh, he doesn't do the job this week yeah I'm, I saw I think I saw the stat I saw on um Sky was that that's Rory has more first round leaders than Tiger, which is what prompted me to to send messages to you guys about it. Mm. Which is um, and then blind, and it's then, blind like, bet, tastic, isn't it? It is blind bet. I mean, for a regular event, it is blind bet. And then that got me thinking about why he doesn't always seem to get going a major so quickly. And uh, you know, is is it because you know you hark back to when Tiger used to say, "Oh, and, and you know." You don't need to start fast, play your way in. And, you know, is that part of, like, the psychological makeup Rory has for majors that somehow doesn't get him involved early enough in the, the upper you know the upper areas of the leaderboard? Uh, who knows? I mean, if we could figure out Rory, we'd uh, life would be a lot less boring, you know, interesting. <laughs> yeah, but I think if Rory could figure out Rory, then uh, it, it's... Uh... He'd been world number one by an absolute mile. Just to put it into context, he's eleven to one for first round leader versus what, three to one near as Give me that for bet. the uh, for the outright. Yeah. Give me that bet. <clears throat> first round leader last week. He was also the first round leader at the BMW Championship in August, which was one, two, three, four, five, six events ago. So he's had two first round leaders in the last six. Mm. He does pop up very regularly. Steve, what about you? You got any bets in this one? <clears throat> Uh, I didn't have any bets on the DP World Tour last week, so I'm like a kid in the candy store. Um, Laurie Cantor, mm. fourth and second, fourth here in 2021. Yep. That, if he wins, doesn't tend to win, but I'll take 40 to one with Coral. Eight places each way. I'm following Barry in on Twist and Lawrence. Did you see, from a course perspective, Paul, did you see last week's course and this week's course correlating in the way that it played? Is, is there all I'm thinking is if 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 Tristan can play last week so well, surely that could translate to this week on a course where he's just got miscut so far because they they are going to kind you know basically he's playing far better golf. Yeah, I, only. The only correlation I think we might find is that the greens will play um, similarly firm and that will create a similar kind of challenge on and around the greens. From sea to green, they're very different courses. But um, yeah, so a, a player who, who performed well and that kind of why I went down the Olufsen route was that players who, who got to grips with it quite quickly last week um, could well hit the ground running this week as well. But um, yeah, I, 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 you, you might find over time that that Thriston Lawrence um, perform or that that record, the miscut, miscut here is yeah, you know, is an anomaly, yeah. and uh, he, he puts it right at some point. He was a different player back then. It, yeah. It's always yeah. the question is, would you prefer somebody who's playing well but has a poor record on a course, or somebody who's playing poorly but has a great record on a course? That's you can that's make the, the argument both ways, can't you? Yeah. 
I remember backing a while ago Sepp Straka at the Sanderson Farms, who'd had, a, I think it was three outings, three miscuts, and we just said at the time, this guy is phenomenally much better than he was, and he finished second. Yeah. You know, regulars yeah, yeah. won't find that surprised that he finished second, because I was on him, but... <laughs> Um, yes, yeah, I, yeah I'm, I'm not so concerned about that. I'm following you in on Moronpol. I mean, that's a no-brainer. You do get this thing where people, a lot of people, have finished top ten the out and before, and then win this. Yep, yep. And that brings me to my last pick. I'm going for the Invisible Man. I'm going for Wacky Neiman. Twenty to one with William Hill. Six places each way on Wacky Neiman. Mm. This is a guy that's gone to live, earned a bucket full of money, and he's now realising that he can't play in major championships anymore. He's ranked 17th in the world, and the only way that he can get to play the Masters is to have very exceptional weeks at the very limited OWGR outings that he has that aren't live events. And clearly he won the Australian Open before Christmas in a situler, in a similar setting. He did. And so, yeah, I'm on Joaquin. He yeah. currently sits 70th in the world and will not be playing the Masters unless he can get some exceptional finishes in a couple of tournaments before the cutoff. Yeah, no, there's, there's, there's big... Uh... There's a big incentive there for him to to play well. The, the the live guys absolutely mopped up at the back end of last year as they well. They did, didn't, didn't they? they? They were just winning absolutely everything. So there's there's some motivation there from all those guys to take their opportunities and to to you know to try and uh, get as many world ranking <clears throat> points from these events as they possibly can. So. Yeah. There's some very strange. Well, there's just w- notable stuff going on at the moment. Woodland came back last week. That was great to see. Mm. Daniel Berger's playing this week at the Amex, which is his first outing on the PJ Tour since the US Open in 2022. Wow! And like you said, you can then get these live guys that have been mopping up, like Neiman. They're trying, you know, they're just going around like sponges, trying to get some official world golf ranking points yeah. in these these events. Yeah, Oosthausen and. Listen to this, chaps. Hideki Matsuama is now outside the world's top 50 players. Wow. Unbelievable. Mm, he's Weird man. stuff going on, man. I think that's us. Uh, I hope your bets go well, chaps. Yeah, best luck, boys. You too, boys. I hope your bets go well at home. I expect next week we are celebrating Siwoo Kim's victory at the American Express. <laughs> Uh, none of us have got a penny on him Uh, we will be back next week for uh, always one of my favourites we all mopped up last year on Max Homer the Farmers Insurance Open from Torrey Pines Mm. Paul what are you on? Uh, Razel Kaima next week that's right we'll see you again next week cheerio if you like betting on God but everyone that you back misses the cut Get some experts involved With all the stats and the tips and so much more Cause it's the golf betting system The go-